Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel and welcome to Everyone Loves an Old V New. So I've got the old i525 from Ping in my hands that's literally just been taken over by the i530. Now the i525 was a powerhouse for Ping. It sold ridiculously well because it was so very, very good. It really kind of spanned the handicap range because it is a very functional iron. It's very punchy and it's also very forgiving for what it is. And then out come the new i530. There is a 1.5 degree difference in loft between these. So this is 29 degrees this is 30.5. So there is only a degree and a half. So it'll be interesting to see if that degree and a half difference in loft is going to come with a problem with peak heights and descent angles, etc. Now I've got full reviews of these on my channel, etc. Well, let's go give these a hit. I will whack these all over the face as I normally do when it comes to forgiveness testing to test out the differences between these and then I will try as best I can do to match the lofts as well. And so we are apples for apples testing, right? Let's go get these on a hole and let's go see if there's any feel difference and looks difference between these two. Simulator is now on and I've got the i525 in my hands here. We'll do this one, but then we're going to do the i530 afterwards. So uh, we're at Butterfield Blue Red, hole 18. It's a par three of 171 yards. We are 17 feet below the surface of the green. So it will be interesting to see how the golf ball comes in uh, when we are so much lower than the high green. Um, i525, if we go by the looks, um, they look very, very similar from the top line. The top line on the i525 and also i530, I would say is medium thickness, but it's rounded at the back. So you don't truly see the full thickness of the actual uh, top line. They've both got chamfered trailing edges. I would say that the um, sole on the i530 has a bigger trailing edge um, relief on the back of the sole. They've both got Micromax screws, but you can see the white line up line a little bit better on the i525 than you can the i530. Well, you could want to start, you'd take that any day of the week. Absolutely you would. Safe. At the back end of the green, right of this green is dead and quick. Path 1.4 from the inside and face 0.7 close, zero, mir zero strike, zero mil hill, zero mil low. Very good, 36 yards, 36 and a half yards in the end, 46.2 degrees descent angle, stopping on a green at 175. Now, obviously we are hitting uphill and so that's gonna affect our carry number and it will affect also our descent angles, et cetera, and peak hikes. And that's descending at 46 degrees and it will stop at 175 yards. Quad says 180. So again, what will be 17 feet? So within, yeah, 5.666 yards, we're losing a similar amount of uh, distance, but it's working very, very well. The feel is a punchy feel. I've hit I-530 quite a few times now, guys, and I'd be struggling if I was honest to, to really tell the difference between them. But it's so, I mean, yeah, it's such a, very, very tough uh, decision between them. That's not ideal. That strike is not ideal, slightly low toe. Again, it's doing everything you want. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, descent angles is on that one. Delivery was good though, 0 0.9 across uh, 0 0.2, so less than a degree, but I would like to try if we can get that club path consistently slightly from the inside, that'd be nice. Um, but 34 yards in the air and 45 degrees descent angle, yes. So we hit it slightly low, slightly toe. You're gonna have a slightly suppressed launch, uh, but it's still going on a green, 172 yards, 177 on quad, and it's stopping on any green. It just does every single thing that Ping want from the i525, and so Ping are gonna have to do very well to beats the i525. Now, of course, it may win on the i525 when it comes to the loft because the i530 is 29 degrees where this is not. But it'll be interesting to see, like for like, see if we can do apples, apples testing, match the lofts and see what differences there truly are. Now, I will be doing my full forgiveness testing on this as well to see what the difference is in forgiveness is potential between these two because it will be interesting if there's any difference between them. Club half on that 1.5 from the inside, face baby close 0 0.2, one mil high, five mil toe, a decent hit, can't complain. Uh, 36 yards in the air and 46 degrees descent. As you can see there, stopping on any green, subject to me controlling the golf club properly. But yeah, feel, it's definitely hollow bodied. You can feel it, it's definitely confidence bar and thud, punch. Um, not massively clickly, clickly, well, not massively high pitch at least in its, um, and it's noise that it makes, but it, you can definitely tell it is not solid. It is a, a hollow bodied player's distance iron. Yeah, you take that all day long. 
Slightly low on the face, but I mean, it's just working well. Absolutely working well. Distance is good. Peak heights are good. Forgiveness is generally speaking very good on these. Club half, 0.3 from the inside. Face baby close. That's why it's just hugging the left-hand side a little bit, but strikes really good. Uh, zero mil heel, four mil low, um, which means 33 yards in the air, 44 degrees of scent angle. You cannot complain even with the green slightly above our level. So let's go flip over now to the i530. Slightly different looks, see if there's any difference in feel, etc. Before we whack it all over the face to see what difference there are in performance, and I'll do as best I can do, loft for loft matching, and then see what difference there is forgiveness wise. Day set now changed, guys. We have got the i530 in our hands. We have the same hole, just uh, changed data set, so we've got a different color. The i525, you could argue, does look more like a fat eye blade. And, and when you look at the i530, there is a little bit more angles and bells and whistles on this thing, but it does look quite nice from its bladed idea, but obviously bigger looks. We have the same top line. It's a rounded top edge like the i525. And to be honest, they're both very, very similar in radius of curve and also thickness as well. Sole thickness, I would say both of them are the same size. It's just the i530 has got a slightly larger chamfer on the back end, which makes the effective part of it look a little bit smaller. Blade lengths, again, they are very, very similar. We've both got the white lineup line, the little kind of uh, last groove. The difference is i525. I could see that down by the golf ball, but if I put this down by the golf ball, I struggle to see the whites. And it might be how the light is reflecting off the grooves, but again, one you can see, one you can't, even though they've all got Micromax in them. That's absolutely safe side. Wonderful safe side. That's carrying as well. Look at that, 175 on there. That'd be about 180 on quad. Yeah, that's what it says there. Club path, 0.7 across, face, I mean, it's zero, zero delivery. Zero mil high, two mil hill, good strike, 36 yards in the air, 47 degrees ascent angle. So that's just doing really, really well, considering obviously that green is above our feet. And so that will affect uh, carry and that will affect descent angle. Really, very, very good. I can't complain about the i530 at all. And if anything, I would have to say that it's becoming that good now that really, do you really need the G range? And I think, to be fair, that's what's happening with players' distance signs now. They are getting that good that it's now stopped becoming the need. You don't have to then go all the way to like a game improvement iron. You can go straight to a player's distance because they are becoming that good and that forgiving. Right, give it another hit. Oh, that's really ridiculously poor. That's going to be in the bunker. Got to be in the bunker. Got to be in the bunker. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> It was just weak, that one. Not good, I think you'll see. Double digits low on the face is never good when it comes to any kind of golf club whatsoever. Um, and so, yeah, going 31 yards in the air and 43 degrees is that angle. The chances are that would have still stopped. Uh, however, it didn't hit the green. Uh, that was not a good effort. <laughs> that was definitely not a good effort. Let's see if we can do a better job on the next one. That's a safer miss, just toe. Right in the heart of the green, better delivery. Stay away from that bunker. Club path zero, faces zero. We've got three mil low, 10 mil toe. There you go. It's happier off the toe than it is ever off of low on the face. 10 mil toe is happier than 10 mil low. Uh, 36 yards in the air and 46 degrees ascent angle. Yeah, it's working, it really is. If you've done that with a blade, go double digits low. That's when you're getting those fingers which are fuzzing because it hurts that much. With one of these, you get away with it. Um, you will lose distance, of course you will do, but it won't be nowhere near as, the feedback is nowhere near as aggressive as it is on blades, etc. And it works just as well as the game improvement eyes. Right, one more. Let's see if we can get a good result on the last one. We did, left though. I mean, that is safer. That is flying because my face was so shut. <laughs> Look at that, 2.8 degrees closed. Uh, 0.9 from the inside, yay, 2.8 closed. Um, zero mil low, four mil toe. So the strike was really very, very good. 36 yards in the air, 45 degrees ascent angle. It's just 12 yards left because I can't control my face. Performance wise, you could argue, yes, the i530 is going slightly further, but then again, it is slightly stronger lofted than the i525. So let's turn this off. Let's go on the range, see that a load of times, ridiculous amounts of times. Let's loft adjust these to make sure we are testing apples for apples. 
out the middle and around, how well do these work? And also, when you hit some weird and wonderful shots, of which I've already done today, which one is more forgiving than the other? So let's go see how the i525 got on against the i530 when I hit it a load of times, not just four shots on a simulator. So a data set of four is not really much whatsoever. Um, we're talking about 75 shots or so each, yeah, about 150 uh, between them. And so let's go see how well it works from not just the middle, but then from off center hits as well. So the data set we can see in front of us is all the ball and club head data for all of the shots for the i525 and i530. And as you can see, we've got a ball speed increase. This is without looking at the club head data to start with of 0.3 of a mile an hour, which is not what, well, not a lot whatsoever. We have a launch angle of 1870, it's 192. So the i530 is launching half a degree uh, higher. We do have a spin difference. So if you have a look at that one, 55 to 5,000. So there's about 500 RPM of spin difference. Now 500 RPM may seem a lot or it may seem not a lot. And remembering uh, this thing, guys, I use a relatively low spin spinning golf ball. Any numbers of this, I use the same golf ball, the RB Tour, the Mizuno RB Tour, and it is a relatively low spinning golf ball. It has a profile much so similar to that of a Pro V1 stroke, a Pro V1 AVX. So it's in between that spin profile. You can quite easily get these spin rates up just by changing golf ball. But all the tests that I do, are with the same golf ball to try and keep everything apples for apples testing. It's going uh, 179 yards to 183. That is because of the slightly higher launch of the i530 and then slightly lower spin rate. And it means it's going 37 yards in the air to 38. So we're gaining one yard in peak height, which is not a great deal, but there you go. And it is basically exactly the same descent angle, 48.6 degrees to 48.5. Uh, Clubhead speed difference is 0.1 of a mile an hour, 90.8 to 90.9. Exactly the same efficiency, exactly the same attack angle. Again, face to path and club path are very, very close together and exactly the same dynamic loft. And remember, these are not quite, shall we say, lofted the same, but I am able within a very small amount. Again, if we're talking like a big difference between golf clubs, I cannot change delivery to match lofts as best. When we're talking about a relatively small amount and the distance, uh, difference between i525 and i530 is relatively small. So I can do that in delivery. So the exactly the same uh, dynamic loft. And of course, face impact, we're talking one mil toe, three mil low against two mil toe, one mil low. And we have stand deviation on there as well. And you can see i530 on average, I actually hit fractionally worse than the i525. We are talking a millimeter and a millimeter. Let's get to how the head works when it comes to forgiveness. And if we want to know how something works from off center hits, first we do need to understand how it works from the middle. So I've got two golf clubs to test here and I will be doing like for like on every single one. So let's just do the maxed out first on the i525. We've got one millimeter low, zero millimeter hill. So within reason, one millimeter, it is right out the screws. Face is zero to a path, which is 0.9 from the inside and 24.7 degrees of loft. We are talking on 1.38. Talking 1.38 is a decent, very decent uh, efficiency number. If we go over to an i530, again, within one millimeter, exactly the same, and within 0.2 of a degree of loft, exactly the same. A face is open by 0.2, it's such a small amount, and exactly the same efficiency. So I'm not surprised that the face on the i530 and the face on the i525 is effectively the same. There's no difference out of the middle that you're gonna get between an i530 and an i525. We are seeing a slightly increased launch angle, and that is because of how the head is designed now to vertically gear a bit more, so get a little bit more extra launch, but then it will have a slight reduction in spin over the old one. Again, you can change that quite quickly in just changing your golf ball. Within reason, both exactly the same. Let's go look at some off-center hits now. Here wise we have a 10 mil heel, five, uh, three mil high, so half an inch gross off of middle, and it's gone down to 1.33. On an i525 26 degrees of loft mine so we have to remember that against 11 mil heel two mil low again 13 millimeters gross off the middle half an inch off the middle it's 1.36 but we are talking about that it's two degrees less loft 24 degrees and 26 now okay two degrees is not going to make 0.03 and so there is going to be a gain definitely from an i530 uh, over an i525 when it comes to off center hits again we are talking relatively small amounts again if we were to change the uh, make the calculation difference between the 24 and 26. You're looking at 0.01 to 0.015. So with, the gain isn't great, isn't massive, but it's still a gain. And we are winning from going an i530 off of heel strikes. Let's go flick over to a low on the face. An i525 here, we've got 10 mil low, two mil heel, just a standard normal 
thin. It's a double digit miss. And so anytime you hit double digit miss low on the face you and you play blades, you are definitely gonna feel that when the old fuzzy fingers, you get away with it much more on the player's distance category, but it's 1.32. So you can't complain whatsoever on that one. If you go 11 mil low, so one millimeter worse strike, one millimeter is not a lot, but it is low on the face. We got 1.32. So within reason, we're both exactly the same. It's just, if you look at the loft difference, um, one you've got with a 23.9 degrees, which is the I-525 against the 25.5 degrees. So we've got more loft, which is, means more deflection. As soon as you add more loft, you have more deflection, which means you get a lower efficiency. We've got a slightly open face on the uh, I-530 to a slightly closed face on the I-525. So if you were to put all those two bits uh, together, you'd say that even though they're the same efficiency, they're made up. Um, where the i525 is delivered st more strong in its delivery to get that number than the i530 so again it's going to be relatively small guys but you'd say the i530 still wins fractionally when it comes to low strikes as well let's go slightly toe shall we 14 millimeters toe two mil high again path and face fairly zero zero 25.1 degrees of loft again so we were talking within a very small amount of what the maxed out was when the i525 does a 1.35 from 16 millimeters gross if you go over to the i530 we got 14 mil toe 3 mil low so again 16 millimeters to 17 millimeters is one millimeter it's nothing but the talking within reason the same strike face is slightly closed yes it is and has got a very fractionally uh, lower loft by one degree yeah one yeah 1.1 degrees but we're looking at 1.37 1.35 to 1.37 again we are talking very small amounts and if you were to take into account the slight loft change and also the face change as well that may be one naught point naught one so again the, the difference between the i530 and the i525 on everywhere on the face, apart from the middle, the middle is exactly the same. But if you go heel and if you go low and if you go toe as well, you were talking about there's going to be small incremental nudging, pushing of needles. We're not talking massive steps. The i530 uh, over the i525, the i525 was a really very, very good iron. Basically performing exactly the same out of the middle. You're not going to get really anything else. Uh, that you'd expect, but you are going to get a little bit more extra distance and from the i530. Now that comes from slightly stronger lofts. Yes, it does. 1.5 or so degrees stronger in the real world where you are not going to be delivering like I'm trying to deliver match lofts, you will be delivering slightly less lofts. So you're going to gain more than I saw here. I just tried in this test to match the lofts as best I can do to see if there's any physical difference in the head rather than just cranking lofts which a lot of manufacturers do just to gain distance and win the launch monitor wars. So in the real world, ping are going to, the i530 is going to deliver more distance at the same height, etc. than the i525. It comes to forgiveness, a very, very small marginal win to the i530, but it is a very small marginal win. And ping again are pushing, nudging that needle of how to improve an already very, very good iron in the i525 so hope you liked the video if you did go on thumbs up youtube like so do i down there is a subscribe button it's free it's great for the channel if you could subscribe so thank you and next to that is a bell icon that's a notification bell if you click that one that'll let you know next time i upload another video hope you well we'll see you again soon